So we are back again for the MetaMinds podcast, and on today's episode, we have one of my very good friends here, Yossip. <laughs> um, I met him through TAFE doing a web development course. He's kind of taken that web development a little further than me and started the largest cannabis publication in Australia, known as Friendly Aussie Buds, and now he's got an exciting new project called Better Letters. So can you tell us a little bit about your motivations for starting that? And maybe your mindset coming into a new project. Um, I'll first tell you what Better Letters really is. That would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've made it possible to send a physical letter through the internet. Not an email, but a physical letter. For some reason, people keep thinking, you mean like email? No, no, no. I mean a real letter on paper, <laughs> folded up with a stamp through the internet. But the catch of that is... It, gets, uh, it has a database of every single federal uh, MP in the House and Senate uh, for their addresses, for their offices. So you can do a mail merge type situation where you go, dear first name, last name. So Scott Morrison, Bill Shorten, et cetera, in one template. And then you can just go, I want to send it to this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. You hit next, generates your letter. You press next, you pay, and then we do it for you. But then the kicker on top of that is we added the ability to... Uh, well, we have campaigns, so we have a few campaigns we're going to have when we launch and we're planning to add more and more as they go on. So think of it as change.org, but instead of just signing a petition on a website where a number ticks over and it doesn't do anything, you will send a letter to the parliament house. Well, not the parliament house, but the parliamentarian's office. Or, yes. or whoever it or is. Whoever. Or whoever you want to send yeah, it even to. even just yeah. your local I'll just send yeah. letters to yeah. Dan, basically. Yeah. <laughs> That's a possibility as well, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping for a lot of love letters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's really interesting, man. We're going to call it Better Love. <laughs> better Love. <laughs> Launch on Valentine's Day. Yeah. 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 Well, day before, a week before yeah. we that time. Oh, course, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Business mind, you're going to have yeah, that. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah, what was the reason for yeah. starting this? Motivation behind it. So, I have the... Cannabis publication, Friendly Aussie Buds, or FAB for short, because we're fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, and inherently, what would my ultimate goal for that to get successful be? Well, I'd need it to be legal, or at least legal somewhere in some state. So the idea was, what can I do as my skill set to help that kind of legalization cause? And then I um, was thinking... How do you cause any sort of political change within society? And it's that's also a part of a value shift that you have to do with the people. But how do you get politicians to listen? And then we've always had these online e-petitions. The government even runs some of their own, like the Queensland government definitely does. And the other ones do. They get 10, 13,000 signatures. Um, and then there's the change.org ones, which get hundreds of thousands, if not a few million. But again... It's just a number on a screen, so it's the same as one or a million. It doesn't, mm. it doesn't, you don't physically feel what a million people is. Yes. Right? So what I did was, I was just thinking, okay, can you send a letter through the internet? So I started Googling. You, there was a few places where you could kind of do it, but none of them interfaced it like to a consumer. It was done to a business. So mm. when it's to a business, it means you have to make something that makes that letter send. So you send them the data. So what I did, I made a consumer product, which allowed um, consumers to use that service, but through us, because they don't have that interface. So I just basically built an interface to connect to the letter sending people. Mm. Um, and once I realized that was possible, I started thinking, okay, I'm going to do this for cannabis. And then I started telling people about the idea and the idea just kind of grew and it was just, well, why isn't it for every issue, which sparked really quickly, but it was, how do you do it? And then it just kind of became, okay, let's copy what change.org does, but let's make it a little different where we have multiple templates of letters and people can write their own and then it all sends and whatnot, but it keeps a tally of how many letters get sent. So it's like signatures on a petition, mm. but it's just the letters sent. Yeah. And That's definitely motivating to see when you're on a website that 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 has like this many petitions signed, or whatever. That mm. you know, if it's already if it's two, then you're gonna be like, well, my mine would make a difference. But if it's a hundred thousand or something, yeah. you're like, oh, of course I'll do it. And especially yeah. if it's physical, That's people it. are gonna be like, oh, this many people's already done it. Then mm. my effects are gonna be yeah. amplified mm. even more. So it's good. And with a lot of these online petitions as well, like some of them, you have to have up to a hundred thousand signatures before they'll even consider taking it to that person they want to refer to. Yeah. Um, where yours is like multiple physical letters that. Or, you know, they, they receive them, they arrive, 
and then they physically have to process them. Yeah. Or, you know, if yeah. they ignore them, there's going to be thousands of them sitting there. So, I mean, yeah, it's more of like a direct approach where they have to tangibly open, because I believe they have to, like, within their agreement, they have to open physical I, letters. I, I tried looking for, like, if there's legislation that a parliamentarian has to read their email and whatnot. So, they don't have to. They have constituents do it, because they'd never be able to catch no, up No, not it. with everything, yeah. But I don't know... I couldn't find if they have to reply to a letter. Yeah. There's nothing about that. But what I do know is they do get letters and they need to be read. And regardless of what the issue is, they need to be looking at them. Careful with the table, sorry. Oh, the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next time we won't have a table. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold the, the mic. Floor. You'll hold it. <laughs> <I'll> just... <laughs> Can I let is it go? Is that good there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, okay. But at least it's, it's a different approach as well. It's, it's, it's something that hasn't been done. Yeah. And I did look back in the 80s and stuff, and that's how people obviously did communicate with government, and that's mm. how things got pushed through a little more. So I'm hoping maybe that comes back. It's just bringing kind of the old with the new. Yeah. Um, it's what I'm hoping for, but it's a matter of will people choose to go through with it and do it, because yep. it does cost money in this case, mm -hmm. rather than just a few quick seconds typing in your name and hitting enter. Yep. You have to spend a little bit of money. But um, my hope with that is even if someone does spend the money and the government, say we sent 100,000 or even a million letters regarding one issue, if the government still gives us the cookie cutter response, which they always tend to do, because they normally have these pre-written, our position is this, mm -hmm. and it never changes. If they do that after a million, I think people have to start thinking, well, why are they even here? Mm. Like, if they can't listen to a million people trying to push for something... They obviously don't listen at all. They're not in touch with well, the people. They don't yeah. listen yeah. at all, though. No. Do they? So, I mean, I suppose it's yeah. That's I guess what this is trying to yeah. potentially change. Yeah. Yeah. It's try. The idea is rather than corporations lobbying, it's the people lobbying. Yeah. Right. Because corporations have the most sway because they pay for their campaigns and give them money. We're not as bad as the US and whatnot, but they still have a big grip on our politicians because they need them to exist mm. um, to well push what they want. Yeah. I guess it's like really good because it like I think the the stat is like seventy or eighty percent of Australians like like would vote for legalization of cannabis. So even if fifty percent of them are passionate enough yeah. to actually act on that, yeah. then all of a sudden we can just send them like eight million letters, mm. and then like <laughs> yeah. you can't ignore eight million letters. You yeah, know? well that's it. Hopefully, yeah. The, the only catch there is you know finding eight million people. Like how do you yeah. reach that many yeah. to agree to do it? Yeah, so that's yeah. still that's the why common metamines, man. Yeah, our, our audience <laughs> is huge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that's interesting so I, good. I, are you able to tell us what you're going to be launching with the campaigns you'll be launching um, with so the campaigns I have we have cannabis legalization and that's to push for recreational not the medicinal stuff because the medicinal stuff's been gone through and there's only about 3,300 patients in all of Australia mm. and some of that stuff costs $45,000 like for their yearly subscription of the stuff and it's like so I have to work you know an extra job mm. <laughs> to pay for this when I could just be growing it myself for well 45 times less than that mm. so and getting better quality that's the other thing it's not even in terms of quality they're not even getting what they should be getting mm. So, uh, we have the cannabis campaign. We have the pill testing campaign. It's a big issue at the moment. Yeah, um, mm. A lot of people are looking at it. So, one of the issues that we have with better letters at present, because it's in beta, alpha, whatever you want to call it, we've only got the federal government's database um, because time and money and because I've built this all myself. Um, I haven't added all the state libraries and that will come. And they, what the federal government tends to do, and they'll do this with the cannabis as well, is it is a state issue. But when the states get told this, it is a federal yeah, issue. I've seen <laughs> and it's this constant back and forth. So yeah. I'm just hoping just a bit of bullying maybe gets them to think about it or push it on the states yeah. or something. Mm. Um, and then I want to add the states as well. That will happen really quickly once things get going. It's just time. Mm. Um, and priorities. Yeah. Mm. it's I need something out there to see if it will work first. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the pill testing is a really big one. Um, I think that could be maybe a big indicator of, well, this is what the country wants. Uh, the next one, I've got data encryption laws. So they recently passed a whole bunch of laws where they're allowed to unlock your phone, go Disgusting. through your messages. Mm. They're trying to get Wicker and all that to um, decrypt people's messages and stuff. I don't even know if they physically can do it without creating the ability to do it. Yeah. Mm. So 
it's like a complete invasion of privacy and it's there's no one else in nowhere else in the world that has done this no it's mm. really embarrassing like mm. it's it, it makes no sense um it's it's sad so that's a big one uh and that's definitely a federal issue so that's nice uh and then our royal commission into the murray darling river situation mm. so with all those fish that died and how the river's being drained up by cotton farms and whatnot I would like to see something done about it and maybe some better proposals put forward or something like that. Mm. And um, then the last one is just uh, nicotine legalization for vaporizers, right? So many people have started to do the swap. I've got a lot of friends and um, they have quit cigarettes and they're like, this has literally saved my life because they can breathe again. Mm. Um, like it's unreal. It saves them a lot of money. Um, and people want to maybe talk about those health concerns that come with the vaping legalization because we don't know it, yep. right? But we do know tobaccos, right? Like we know it's inherently bad. It causes probably more health harm than probably anything else on the planet apart maybe alcohol. Um, so that's not working. Let's try the vaping. No one's dead yet, mm. right? Like there's less symptoms of it. And the other thing with the vaping is it's also a way for people to actually stop it's a way to wean people off. Yeah. You lower your dosage and then maybe they can actually completely quit. That's it. Wait, so you're saying to legal sorry, to legalize like the actual, nicotine. Oh, okay. Nicotine. Because yeah. like vaping, which isn't yeah. currently legal. Yeah. Okay. So right now you can buy the liquids for it, yeah. you can buy the vapes, but you cannot have the nicotine to put into it. Right. Right? Because nicotine's such an addictive property, they don't mm. want people to have their hands on it. Yeah. It's so what are Australians doing? We're just sending our money overseas to New Zealand, getting yeah. it freighted here in a day. And it's like we bought it in Australia, except yeah. we're just not spending money in Australia. Yeah. Sounds like a good idea, government. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. So. And obviously but, all, all the health effects of like a cigarette itself, it's not the nicotine necessarily. It's like all the poisons the and the additional additives and everything. Yeah. And it's hot as smoke. Yeah. Right? Well, that's so another thing. Yeah. There's a lot to it. And dyed paper, everything. Yeah. I think we can fix a lot of little things with that, but obviously the government isn't too happy about it because they can't really regulate the nicotine the way they can the tobacco because mm. they make a lot of money off the tobacco, right? That The tobacco industry is basically what funds our healthcare system in Australia. Um, so if they were to get people off nicotine, it's uh, off cigarettes, where's that money going to come from to keep paying for healthcare, mm. right? So that's why they've got this inherent struggle. Um, but tobacco use has been going down over and over, especially because they keep right, raising up taxes. Yeah. Right. It's like, I don't know how much I've never smoked a cigarette, but um, it's like they they keeps 40 going bucks up. a pack. Yeah. Every something. six months it goes up. Yeah. So like twice a year you get an increase. Which yeah. Is... That was till 2020, I think. Yeah. And then so, at that point it'll change again, I'm guessing. Yeah. Then they'll go, oh, now we're going to go by this much every year yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It's, it, it's a lot of money that comes from poorer people in particular. Yeah. So the people who are most affected by that are generally poor people who are generally stressed because they have crappy jobs, right? Like they're having to do the jobs no one else wants to do. And as a result, they self-medicate um, or relax with, with illegal drugs. Mm. With illegal drugs. Mm. So it's just a war on poor people, which is sad. Yeah. yeah. And it's never going to get anywhere. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And that's also part of the reason why I want cannabis to be legalized because right now I had a thought actually when I was in the car, maybe there is, is good reason not to legalize cannabis. You know why? It's created this micro economy where it's probably Australia's favorite side hustle, <laughs> right? Think about it. How many dealers like exist? There has to be a lot because there is a lot of pot smokers, right? Mm. And then there's also the growers and everyone else in between. And it's like, how many jobs has that actually created? If you were to legalize, a lot of people are going to be out of money. Right, but I feel like it would it would actually create more jobs than, yeah. them, you know, and then people because people would be doing it in a safer manner and yeah. it's all regulated. But here's the thing. kicker to it: right now, the people who are dealing are not doing it necessarily full time. They might be doing it as a side income. So a lot of the people that I've met, a lot of them are uh, single mums and dads, or actually not even single young families. Normally, mm. they've normally got a partner. They normally work full time, but on the side, this is what they do because it gives them an extra two to five, six hundred dollars a week. That's cash money that the government's not taking, mm. and it helps their family survive because, well, things are expensive. Mm. But then, like you alluded to a little bit before, you then have the issue of then regulating quality, and you've had that article about PGR, PGR. weed, and that's something that's going to be hard to to regulate from just a side hustle. Yeah. Um, so obviously there are benefits, like like you said, and also more jobs you would think would come through. But it, and, and it's these, good to point out the negative. It is I good point because yeah, it's yeah. like not all positive. It, it will and, make and, an impact on poorer people. I think poor yeah. people could actually be a little worse off with legalization because of these things because 
you will meet a lot of lower socio people who are on cannabis using cannabis because yep. it helps them deal with anxiety and depression and often people who are suffering from that are on that lower socio because they've been trapped in whatever cycle yep. yeah right so cannabis is a really touchy subject because it opens a lot of different doors not just revenue to come in it's it's a big social shift it's a social value yeah. shift mm -hmm. and recognizing that is really <laughs> That, that's a big thing that a lot of people who are anti-cannabis don't look at. They just look at it as, oh, it's people who are smoking and doing nothing all day. It's not the actual reality of mm. what goes on with people who use cannabis. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of other external factors. You know, I, have, I know chicks who have bipolar and they get those really manic depressive days where they can't get out of bed. Mm. They smoke. And suddenly they're out of bed, yeah, yeah. right? And are you going to say they're dependent on it? Maybe. But the thing is, if they didn't have it, they wouldn't get out of bed. Their yeah. meds, their antidepressants, yeah, they, 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 it's, it. it's obviously not doing what they need to. That's it. Cannabis doesn't cure depression by no means. It just masks it and lets you get away from it, yeah. right? It's, it's a good escape from mm -hmm. feeling like that. Yeah. Sometimes you need to feel depressed because you're probably in a crappy, shitty spot. Mm. And you're normally, I, the way I've interpreted depression recently or last maybe two years, you are depressed when you are staying still, right? So stillness is what causes depression. It means you're doing nothing. You're not moving forward. You're not moving backwards. You're just stuck. Mm. So if cannabis helps you, you know, ignore that bit and then let you go on with your day, you're doing yep. something, your depression gets a little less and less. Yep. Yep. So yep. that's how I've tried to interpret depression. That's it. And if there are any benefits at all to it, which have been proven time and time again, then the people should be able to utilize a plant, right? At the end of the yeah. day, like if they're regulating a poison like alcohol or yeah. tobacco and they're regulating that and, and that money's then going into the economy and they're allowing that to happen, turning a blind eye to it, then yeah, it, it makes no sense to me that they're deterring people from taking something that could potentially improve their lives or help them. But it's yeah. all big pharma, right? Like they're of the course, ones that are yeah. capitalizing on these depression medication yep. and all these kind of things. Yep. Can't patent a plant very easily. Yep. That's it. And that's people can it. grow it. And that's the thing that, you know, like yep. you can't like just stop you from growing it. And all of a sudden that means you can't make money off that thing. Yep. But I feel like people wouldn't grow it. They would prefer to just buy it over people the People are lazy. Yeah, of course it. they would. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's funny because it's like one of the big farmers just invest their money into this thing, which yeah. is technically a medication, yeah, right? right. There you and then go. like people will it will be better yeah. culture around it, and they'll make way more money, as we've seen in America yeah. mm -hmm. and in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just there's a lot of very strange things, and with Australia, we've got um issues of UN sanctions. So we mm. grow the world's op op opium supply. I, I think it's 50% or 75. Or it was 50 and going to 75. We're already at 75. I can't quite remember. But we are the ones who grow all the opiates in, a, in the world almost. Like damn near all of them. And we only have that because the UN has given us the treaties and whatnot to do that. And we grow that down in Tassie. If we were to legalize cannabis, we're going against the UN. And what happens when you go against the UN? you get those treaties taken away from you, which is mm. a big industry for us. Yeah. So while we would gain a cannabis industry, we're losing a global one. Yeah. yeah. So it's, th th there's these things that the government is, can, has to think about. Um, mm. But you're starting to see the UN and the World Health Organization also starting to shift minds while our politicians are not even willing to discuss it at the moment. Mm. Well, it's good to see that you're actually very educated on the matter as well, especially trying to actually change the political climate, which is obviously mm -hmm. a very huge uh, thing to tackle. And especially for one man to do, that's a very scary thing to do, especially mm -hmm. when all the forces are against you. So I guess getting back to this better letters thing, like, can you tell us about like when it's, when it's going to be released and launched and how can people actually like um, get involved? So I'm looking to launch it this Sunday, hopefully this Sunday. Um, we didn't know when this podcast yeah, yeah, would yeah. come out, but... but <laughs> This Sunday is uh, St. Paddy's Day, so luck oh, the yeah, Irish. There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe a bit of luck. Fingers crossed. Um, but I, I'm pretty confident. So I think that's the 17th or 18th of March. Okay. Um, looking to do that. You get involved by literally just visiting the website, clicking a campaign, hitting like a couple buttons. And if you want to write your own letter, you go ahead. If you don't, we've got three different types of templates for you on every issue. Mm -hmm. And they're written in an academic format. So that's your first one. It's very well researched. It's cited and whatnot. Your second one's very persuasive, um, and your third one's a very like personal emotive one. Mm. So you have a choice. You can mix the three if you want. You know, copy paste from each. Grab what you like, what you don't, or write your entirely whole new one. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. You just select who you want to send it to. Ideally, you know your local member and anyone else that you think could be swayed. Um, particularly the minor parties and maybe some labor parties if you're looking for cannabis in particular uh, members, because the liberals just do not give a crap. No. 
um, very hard stance, which is strange because they call themselves liberals, which <laughs> comes from libertarian, which means freedom of choice. <laughs> Don't know how it works, but yeah. I'm learning. Um, so you just pick who you want to send it to. Uh, starts at $3 for one letter, but if you go to two letters, it's $5 for the two and then two fifty thereafter. Yeah. Um, so basically four letters for $10. You can get the whole family involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring the kids along. Yeah. Uh, yeah hey, cool. kids. <laughs> 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 Mommy wants some weed. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, really. So have you been concept, involved in a couple of different things kind of leading up to this to kind of help get the get the word out there and that kind of thing? Um or? so my cannabis publication, Fab, that's a pretty big one. It's given me a platform firstly. Mm. Uh we've got as it stands pretty close to 3.3 thousand followers on Facebook and like 600 on Insta, but it's our actual website where it gets the traffic. Yeah. Um, we just hit a hundred thousand visitors. Watch the table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the table. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, poor table. Um, yeah. we hit a hundred thousand unique, visitors, uh, unique right? visitors yep. and we launched in around mid June, 2018. Mm. And we're now in March 2019. So yeah. in less than a year, we've had 100,000 people visit. That's good. Um, so we, we hit a lot of people and we're particularly, we've got a big following on Reddit, which is probably where a lot of traffic helps. That's actually where it all started from. I started mm. advertising it on Reddit because I saw that's a community I could tap into straight away. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, a community that cares as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that helped. And then I found a few other Facebook groups, some of which have around fifteen to 20,000 members each. Um, like the medical cannabis, yeah, MCUA, I can't remember what their UNA is, something mm. Australia, Union Australia. Um, it's run by Gail Hester, who's a chick who's been um, lobbying for cannabis for a really long time after her son died. Mm. And uh, she recently lost a foot to gangrene, I think. Mm -hmm. And it was there was a lot of really strange things, but um, she's been pushing hard and uh, she works with the Hemp Embassy and Hemp Party down in Nimbin which I went down to see, um, and they're willing to help push better letters. So once we get it going, they'll put it up through their group, which has 240,000 followers, but only about 40, 50,000 of them are Australian. They've attracted a big mm, international, uh, international audience. audience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, that's, that's potentially a positive thing though. Cause it's, yeah. you don't take, then it can be Australian shared. to yeah, yeah, yeah. send the letter, right? Like mm. you don't have to, but it's a bit weird for someone not Australian to do it, but sure. yeah. Um, so the, they came through and then I've got a few other people and then I've got all the bong stores in Australia. They're pretty favorable to me. I do a little bit of work with them. Um, you mean oil pourers? No, bong stores, because most of them are based <laughs> out, of, <laughs> the, um, uh, out of Canberra, where the politicians happen to be, but uh, they're legally allowed to be sold there. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So in Queensland, you, you can't sell bongs, but in New South Wales and the ACT, you can sell bongs. Interesting. Don't know why, but that's how our rules have kind of come up. Yeah. So, uh, they, they're helpful to push. And then my other plan to push it, uh, because I know a few musicians in Australia, like, uh, a lot of the triple J kind of musicians, cause I go to a lot of gigs. Mm. Uh, I'm going to be asking them to help push it. And a few of them are already on board, uh, anti from the Bennies. Um, they are a band that supports a lot of cannabis. They sing about cannabis like crazy. <laughs> it's, it's their thing. Um, so of course he's supportive, but he, he's got good connections to, uh, Violent Soho, the Dune Rats, Smith Street Band. And, oh, all and they those would all love to get involved as well. Fantastic. They're all cannabis kind of people. Yeah. Like they sing about it. They talk about it. So if they push it through their and audience. Influential figures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it, after that, I don't think it'll take too much. Um, mm. but that's ultimately where I've been heading towards with marketing it and, and whatnot. So I'm hoping that all goes well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got a few minutes left. Um, I don't really want to ask a question that will go for too long, but at the same time, I really want to ask this question because I've obviously yeah. seen the behind the scenes of you like going through all these challenges and there's been so many roadblocks and things that you've had to overcome and, you know, the structures changed and whatnot. So I guess one thing we like to do on the podcast is have some like actionable content about maybe like a mindset that, you know, you've embraced throughout the process that you've noticed has, has helped you. Because I've known with you, you've always kind of had all these different ideas and you've had a very entrepreneurial spirit, but you've focused, you know, originally on fab and now you're putting your energy just into like two little projects or so, or two big projects yeah. instead of like spreading it out. So do you have any advice or anything that you've noticed throughout the process that has helped you to focus, focus. in? Yeah. Uh, there's a lot. That's why so, I didn't really want to ask <laughs> it, but I was like, <laughs> there's a lot, <laughs> but okay. So the first thing 
this all happened after a pretty bad breakup for me. Mm -hmm. um, so that hit and it was obviously like time to, well, one, better myself, two, put it in her face, three, um, I needed to come up with a project to kind of distract myself. So that's kind of, it actually started with another project called Crypto Geek, but that didn't take off. That was a crypto consulting sort of thing, but uh, sad days. Um, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Yeah, okay, maybe one day. That's how you learn through yeah. failing. Though. Yeah, like, but that's it. Uh, if I tell you how many times I failed, it'd be here for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, but I'm sure you've had lessons from each time. You've, of course, you failed. The main one was you gave up. All right. Yeah. So yeah, like giving up is the, the the easiest way to fail. Yeah. That's so basically, what I did. I, um, I swapped out a lot of the content that I watched. So rather than watching TV shows and movies and just wasted time on YouTube, I started watching more motivational things or people who were doing things, uh, in the business world, entrepreneurial or not. So Gary V is a big, mm. he, he, he's just the man. <laughs> um, he's just the man. He's a little crazy, but like, I love it. A lot crazy. <laughs> he, he's a lot crazy, but he speaks so but much honest that. truth. Yeah. It's just, he's, he's, he's the man. Uh, he was really helpful and Patrick Bet David, who is like, he's like Gary V, but he's less social driven. He's more like capitalist mindset driven. So I'll have to look in. Yeah, he's pretty good if you want to think business. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the two of them combined, I kind of jumped between him and then I don't need him all the time. I don't watch him regularly as much as I used to when I started. And as that, as you start doing your own thing, you'll start to notice you pull away from that. Mm. So I did that. And the big advice was always work right yep. work 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 that's work work yeah. that's that's every entrepreneur ever yeah. if you're a successful like big time entrepreneur it's work 12 hours plus so with the work i would um that was really hard to do because i started a full-time job and fab started before the full-time job but when i started the full-time job obviously my extra eight hours plus a day pretty much 10 just went away um so then Gary V broke it down. If you've got 168 hours in a week to um, spend your time mm. and you spend about a third of that sleeping, you've got what, like maybe, what's that, 100 hours if you're lucky? Yep. About 100 hours. And then if you spend about another 40, 50 of them uh, working, working, transiting mm. to work. you've got maybe 30, 40 hours left, however much. Yeah. You've got to eat. So, and then you've got to eat. Yeah. So <laughs> you've only got down down. so yeah. much time. So it's like, use that time to just do something, mm. right? Rather than playing games, I made my game, let's try and get more likes. Let's try and get more visitors. Let's get an article. Just mm. literally turning life into the idea of a game. I love that reason. Right? Yeah, like that it, 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 it's just you set kind of goals and benchmarks and you make your own game. Mm. So that's kind of how I progressed with it. And then the other thing I started reading a lot more, I bought a Kobo, which is like a Kindle sort of mm. thing. And I probably read a book a week for half a year and then less and less, but still averaging probably two books a month. Plus an audio book yeah. here and there. Audible, if you're yeah, lazy, yeah. that's the train I'm on. It's good, but it doesn't sink in as much, I no, find. No, it yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Because you're normally out and about driving or distracted yeah. with something. Yeah. But what is good, what I find is um, I always take about maybe three to five things from an audio book. Like, really, mm. they're cemented. Yeah. And one of the ones that recently came to mind, and I'm not going to bang the table. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. I will um, flip the table. One of the things that recently came to me in a book called Zero, uh, Zero to One, mm -hmm. which is about startups. Um, and it was written by one of the co-founders of PayPal, and he's, he's giving reasons why startups fail and succeed. And it gets into a lot of philosophy in the world and whatnot, but he basically came down to there's four types of people in this world, who, how people look at the world. You've got optimists and pessimists, but there's two different versions. So there's the definite and the um, indefinite. Mm. So a definite optimist is someone who believes the world is going to get better and has an idea of how it's going to get better, right? They have a vision. So this is Elon Musk going, he wants space travel. He wants solar paneled roofs. He wants these electric cars. It's ideas of the future of how society can get better. Yeah. Um, but then you have people who believe the world will get better, but they don't know how, right? Like, and that, that's where we're at right now. Majority of people believe the world's getting better because it progressively is, but living standards are generally going up across the world. Um, poverty is lower. We've all got food. We've got better tech. You know, all this is going up, but we're not really sure of where is this all going, right? Because no one has a real vision. 
And then you've got the pessimists who have the exact opposite kind of view. So the definite um, pessimists who believe the world is going to crap yep. and there's nothing we can do to stop it. So these people are trapped. And uh, if you think about if there is a majority of people that think this, of course, the world's going to think this. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the other people who think the world's going to crap and that, but they're not really sure how they just know there's a lot of bad things going on because we've seen all this media pushing, you know, more than ever. We've got a media saying the world is bad. Mm. Right. Because now we've all got the Internet and everything. But something to think about is in the 60s, if you believe it to be true, and I'm kind of a skeptic, but I still like to believe it's possible. We put man on the moon and we did that in that eight years, right? We did that in eight years. And the reason we got that is because everyone believed it could happen, mm. right? So global consciousness as a whole, when they believe in something, it makes those, those, that something happen. Mm. And this is the problem we've got in the world now because there's so many opinions floating all through the internet and everyone thinks they're right about whatever, whether it's vaccinations, flat earth, mm -hmm. um, global warming, whatever. Everyone's disagreeing on everything because no one can find truth anymore. There is literally, a, to every argument, there is another counter argument, right? No matter what. And we're all struggling to find that. And that's what's causing a lot of the indecisiveness in the world of it not getting better because no one can agree on anything anymore. And- I don't agree with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to send us to hell. <laughs> oh no. So it's happening. to me, if you are wanting the world to be better, you need to believe it will be better. And you need to look at people who are trying to make the world a better place and join them. Right. So follow people who are literally doing the best they can to make the world better in their eyes. You know, like, you know, what's good and bad. You should be able to pick that out. Follow people who are trying to do good. And if you're not a follower, you should be the person trying to do good. Mm. And the people who are doing bad, you need to either stay clear of them or try and encourage them to understand that if they continue to think bad, of course, we're going to go down the bad path. There's no mm. choice. Your mindset is literally everything. If you don't think positively, you just can't get positive results. It's yeah, just not yeah. possible. Perception is reality. Yeah. Right. So as a whole, we need society to think positive right and world will get better and how it will get better mm. the how is a very important bit you know are you is it going to get better because you are helping feed the homeless right of course it's going to get better because you just fed the homeless that's yeah. something good it's better so every action should be positive mm. so yeah. follow people that are doing good things so follow people who are doing you heard things. it here first folks yosip said follow oh, the you? better minds podcast <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want to get this one extracted from you. Of then, course, so. of course. <laughs> Why else would I be here? Yeah, well, that's it. That's I don't it. hang out with chumps. <laughs> cool. So we've gotten a uh, huge, yeah. been, been through a lot of different topics here. It's really fantastic. And it looks like you're doing a lot of really good things in the political, uh, yeah. Um, Let's just hope I don't get killed. Yeah. I'm just going to say for the record. Mm. If I go missing in the next couple months, oh, no. you guys have to release this and say it was the government. <laughs> well, I mean, ideally, like not not ideally, but like I will die a martyr for you people. Bait. You've probably <laughs> gone missing because of this podcast. Yeah, right? maybe that, because possible. you'll be so famous at that point, you know, from the podcast. <laughs> oh wow! <well. laughs> no, just someone from the government picks it up. And yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Gotta take we're, a hit one off. of our avid ninety six subscribers will be a government <laughs> okay, we're representative. Gonna, we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's the end of this podcast. Yeah, Thank you so uh, much for coming on. Yeah, it's always thanks, good. Aussie. It was a really nice chat. Oh, um, where, where can people find you besides, I mean, obviously yeah, yeah. Friendly Aussie Buds? Is that the website? Yeah, FriendlyAussieBuds.com. Uh, you can go to .au and it'll redirect to the .com. Yeah. Um, and uh, BetterLetters.com.au. Mm -hmm. uh, social, you pretty much look those up. They'll come up. Um, yeah, that's about all. Perfect. And as of as of this, it should be live now, so we should be able to go and send letters. Guys, yep. get on this stuff. Let's make some actual change in the world, in, in Australia. It's yep. fantastic. Particularly so. Australia. The rest yeah. of the world can blow up and we'll be sweet. Well, yeah. I mean, it should have a rippling effect on the rest of the world, right? I mean, anything Hopefully, positive yeah, yeah. Yeah. The idea, concept, If least, the idea yeah. is there, I'm hoping it pushes. The actual idea, just quickly. Mm. I found out someone's already done it. Uh -huh. They did it with postcards regarding gun violence in the US to send to um, their local members and stuff. I huh. It happened in November last year and it was just postcards. And I was like, what did you do? Is there any results? Like, is, I, I haven't seen or? too much come out of it. Right, it was this yeah. company that does, um, I can't remember their exact name. They, every time someone buys one, a pair of their shoes, they give it to a child in Africa or someone who oh. needs shoes. And that's the company that did it. It was some entrepreneur and um, they started it. I don't know how it's gone. It didn't look 
too successful. Yeah. Obviously, they've still got. But I mean, yeah, it's yeah. not in Australia. Like that's but you know, it's, it's still fun. It's, it, it's a different story. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Cool. Thanks very awesome. much for watching this Metamines podcast, guys. Thank you very much. Cool. More like sweater mine.